Hello, welcome today's, to today's lesson on how to simplify polynomials. Today we're going to be learning about how to add, subtract, and multiply polynomials. We save dividing polynomials into algebra 2. If you are using Study Island questions to practice these concepts afterward, you're going to be using the Study Island topic polynomials. And you're working on questions in the topic covered in Standard 1.2b. So as always, as we're getting started, don't forget our study tips where you can... Um, pause and rewind and fast forward through this video as you need to. If you need to watch a problem work twice, feel free to do that. Or you can always pause at the beginning of a problem and see how far you can get on your own and then watch what I do and see what mistakes you made, if any, and that way you know what you need to practice more or if you're good to go. So I'm so excited that you're here and let's look at a few problems. The first thing we want to understand before we tackle any examples is the definition of a like term. So here I've listed a bunch of terms scattered around the screen and we're going to go ahead and identify which ones are considered like terms. So a like term you have to have the exact same variables, so these letters, x, y, m, then they, those variables have to have the same exponents. So in this term right here, we have an x and a y with the invisible 1 exponents that aren't written there. So we need any other terms that have an x and a y, and just an x and a y, nothing more, nothing less, are considered a like term. So here I have 5xy, and over here I have a negative 6xy. So these ones that I underlined in brown, those are considered like terms. Now let's go ahead and look at another example. Here I have a negative 2x that I underlined in the blue, and any other terms that have just an x, like this 16x, the ones that, and this negative 8x, those three are considered like terms. I could combine those if I was adding or subtracting. Not this x squared, because it has the 2 exponent. Because this is an x squared and this is a plain x, they're different. They are not like terms. So let's see here. I have a, an x squared with the 25 coefficient and then go ahead can you go ahead and pause and see if you can find any other like terms to the 25 x squared underlined in red so go pause okay so hopefully you found this on your screen all right then the last one here or the next one I should say we have a 3y that are underlined in yellow so find its next term, so go ahead and pause. Hopefully you found this negative 7y as its like term. Now the two that I have left here, up in the corner I have the 15m, and then down here, I'm going to put a triangle around it, I have a 9m cubed. Those both have m's, but they are not like terms because the 15m is just a plain m and the 9m cubed is has the cube so they're not like terms remember it has to have the exact same co the, the exact same variables with the exact same exponents so now we're ready to look at some examples in this first example we have a subtraction problem so the thing we have this first part being subtracted by the second part in parentheses. Now each of these terms in the second part is being subtracted. So this subtraction here is actually going to change the sign of each of these parentheses. That's the part you have to remember when you subtract. Is this, when I rewrite it without parentheses, this is going to be minus 
59x, because the 59 originally was positive, and this was a plus 36. So when I get rid of my parentheses, it's going to become a minus 36y. This subtraction right here changes the second part only. The beginning part is going to stay 82x minus 53y. So I go ahead and get rid of my parentheses and I look for like terms. So I have an 82x and I have a minus 59x. Those are both like terms. So I'm going to combine them. 82 minus 59 is 23x. Now that I've combined my x's, I'm going to go ahead and combine, or see if I can combine, combine any other terms. My next term here is a minus 53y, and I can combine that with this negative 36y because they're both just single y terms. So negative 53y minus 36y is negative 89y. So I go ahead and write that as a subtraction minus 89y. I can't combine x's and y's because they're different terms. So this is all the more I can simplify this problem. So that's going to be my answer, which is letter D. Here is another subtraction problem. So remember, the first thing we want to do is remove our parentheses. The first part is going to remain the same, but when I have subtraction here, that's going to change the sign of every term in the parentheses. Remember, a term is divided or separated from the other ones through an addition or minus sign. So this was a positive 4x squared. It's going to become a minus 4x squared. I had a positive 2x. It's going to become a minus 2x. And then I had a minus 6. It's going to become a plus 6. And now I'm just going to look for like terms to combine. So my first term here has an x squared for so I'm going to look for other x squared. There's one here. Now remember, I want to keep remember that to look at the sign in front. So this is a 6x squared minus a 4x squared. Don't lose that sign. That's a common mistake is people just go 6, 4, 10. No, it's 6 minus 4, so it's going to be 2x squared. And then I'm going to look to see if there's anything I can combine with my 9x. I have... There's a plain x, and then here I have another plain x. So once again, it's a positive 9x minus the 2x. That's going to be a plus 7x. Okay, then I look at what I have remaining. Using the... Using different colors or highlighters or maybe different shapes, like you could put... Here I have a, I could put a square around this and use triangles and circles to help you keep track of which terms you've combined and which ones you haven't. It will help you to not leave something out or to forget something or miss something. So I have a four and I have a six. Those are just both plain numbers. We call those constants. Um, since they're, we can go ahead and combine those positive 4 and positive 6, or 4 plus 6 is 10. So that's my answer, 2x squared plus 7x plus 10, and that's going to be letter A. In this next example, it's very similar to the two subtraction. However, between the parentheses, I have addition. So the first part is going to stay the same. My, I'm going to want to go ahead and drop my parentheses and when I do that that first part stays the same just like the subtraction however with addition I don't change anything in this second part so I can just go ahead and rewrite the whole thing without parentheses and without any changes because it's addition 
And now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go ahead and look for like terms. Now in math, we like to write our final answers in descending order, meaning I start with the highest exponent first. So here my highest exponent is the x squared. Is that 2? And it's the only term with x squared. So I don't have anything to combine it with, so I'm just going to go ahead and rewrite that first. And then my next term down would just be that x. So I have two of those. I have a minus 4x and a positive 7x. When I combine those, it's going to be a positive 3x. So it's going to be plus 3x. And then I have my numbers, which are the plane 8 and the plane 3, they're both positive, so when I add those together, it's going to be plus 11. Now, let's say that you had those in a different order. That's fine, as long as you've realized that your answer is going to be D. So if you had had 3x plus 4x squared plus 11, that's still the same answer as D. It's just written in a different order. This is the standard way that you're going to see your answers, is in that descending order. In this next example, I'm multiplying. If you notice, there's no operation between the parentheses this time. So it's not addition, it's subtraction. One of the ways that we show multiplication is with parentheses. So this is multiplication. And when we do multiplication, we're going to do the FOIL method. FOIL stands for first, outer, inner, last. And that's just a way to remember all the steps we need to to multiply. You can also think about it as double distribution. So you're going to take your first terms times each other. So 5p times negative 3p is going to be negative 15p squared. And then you're going to go ahead and do your outer term. So that's going to be 5p times 7p, or 7q. So that's going to be 35pq. And then I'm going to multiply my inner term. So that's going to be 7q times negative 3p. So that's going to be negative 21pq. Then I'm going to multiply my last terms. So that's going to be 7q times 7q. So it's going to be plus 49q squared. And now I'm just going to look to see if there's any like terms I can combine. So my first one here is a p squared. There's no other just p squareds in my other term, so I can't combine it with anything, so I'm just going to go ahead and rewrite it. Negative 15p squared. Okay, my next term there is a 35pq. I also have a negative 21pq. They have the same variables, so I can go ahead and combine those. 35 minus 21 is 14 pq. So I put a plus 14 pq. And then my last term here is a 49 q squared. There's no other q squared, so once again, I'm just going to go ahead and write that one. So plus 49q squared. And I can't do any more combining or simplifying, so that's going to go ahead and be my final answer, which is letter A. This last example I want to do today is one where people often make a common mistake. They see this little squared out here at the end, and they think, okay, I'm going to square the 2x and I'm going to square the minus 9, and I'm done. That is not the case, because if you remember, squaring, the definition of that means multiplied times itself. So I have this 2x minus 9 
then I need to multiply times itself. So when I expand that expression, it's actually two sets of parentheses. It's actually a FOIL problem. So I'm going to go ahead and FOIL that out. I'm going to take 2x times 2x, which is 4x squared. Then I'm going to take my outer terms, 2x times the minus 9, which is negative 18x. Then I'm going to multiply my inner terms, the minus 9 times 2x, which is another negative 18x. Then I'm going to multiply negative 9 times the other minus 9, which is negative 81. So you can see I'm actually getting four terms to work with here, not just two like you would if you made the mistake everybody does once, at least once in their life. So I have the 4x squared is my first term there. There's no other x squareds in my problem, so I'm just going to rewrite it since I can't combine it with anything else. And then my next term is negative 18x. And negative 18x will combine with that first one because they both have those single x's. Negative 18x minus 18x is going to be negative 36x. And remember, if you have trouble with your negative rules, you can always use the calculator to double check you. There's nothing wrong in, in that. So don't feel like you shouldn't be doing that. Then my last term here is a minus 81. It doesn't have anything to combine with either, so I go ahead and write my answer. And then I'm done. I can't simplify that any further because there's no other like terms to combine. So that's going to be my answer, letter C. Thank you for joining me today.